Hey everybody, Norm from Tested here. I want to introduce you guys to Kevin. Kevin is a member of the BB-8 Builders Club, uh, and you have a BB-8 here. This is your BB-8. Yeah, almost done, yeah. Almost done, wow. So the movie's yeah. been out. BB-8's, you know, he's part of the family, yeah, yeah. because yeah. people have been making a lot of BB-8s. Yeah, uh, uh, people started when the trailer hit. Right. Before we even knew what it was called. Right, when, um, when Mark Hamill said, you know, this is an actual robot on set. Yeah. Said, How can a robot independently have had that move like yeah, this? And, uh, and yeah. People, droid makers, have been uh, coming up with their own solutions. Yeah. So uh, you have a unique solution here. Um, tell me about the process. Of one, how does your BB-8 move and, and operate? Yeah, I mean, uh, so y y y when it hit, I mean, like you said, we saw the trailer. We heard that it was a real robot. So immediately we went from like that's impossible to how do we do it? Um, and I went through some weird ideas. I even had one idea that was uh, uh, the head was a drone that would hover over the body. And it, impossible, stupid. It just you can't get the, the you can't get lift in that in that in that uh, space or whatever. Um, how a lot of people are doing it, um, as you probably know, is uh, through um, a pivot inside the body with a magnet on top, and uh, and that works and it's great. But um, I don't I don't like personally like the way that it kind of it kind of drags. Right, right. Um, and you can't go too fast because the head will fly off. Um, I want mine to, to go fast, like in the trailer, you know what I mean? Like in the movie, like tear, tear you know, tear across. So uh, I took a different approach. I have um, the head and the body are, are two independent robots, essentially. Um, and I'm controlling them now with uh, with Bluetooth. And so what you have here, this is, these are the guts of yeah. your BB-8. This is for the head. This is the head, yeah. Okay. And so uh, all the sound uh, effects and everything are all self-contained in the head. Mm. And okay. I have a, a nine degrees of freedom, you know, gyroscope sensor here that uh, it's not hooked up right now because no point. But uh, that will keep it kind of top center at all times. Mm. And so if I if I want to move it to the you know to the side or whatever, if I let go of the stick, it'll snap back. You know, using that, you know, correcting the wheels or whatever. And you, the wheels itself are for rotation. Uh, on top of the body. And also navigation. Navigation. Like it'll, it'll move it around. How far off center can you get? Well, it? we'll find out. <laughs> but uh, the idea is a lot a lot farther than you normally can with the pivot, because right. the pivot can't do like that, you know. So I hope to get a good, you know, uh, you know, what is that? It would be like a, you know, 80 degree sort of, you know, thing. You know, I'd, I, my hope, what I like is, is when he feels alive and feels real and feels like in the movie. I'm not so concerned with like having all the panels and gizmos work and have it be perfectly screen accurate. I want it to feel like, I, I do it for kids. I like when kids go up to it and they're like, and they fall in love with it. You know, adults just want to know how much it costs and if it can bring you a beer. <laughs> the kids like get into the fun stuff, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? So, so that's, that's really cool. Um, and then the, uh, the, body the body chassis, I started this idea before people had figured out their own way. And my inspiration for this setup was, uh, and I'm dating myself, but uh, the Harlem Globetrotters remote control basketball. Oh, okay. They the way they did it was like this with a with a pendulum axis. So I have this motor here. If I turn the motor, you know, right or left, it'll swing the weight forward or backwards. And then I have this this winch servo to turn, you know, swing the weight left or right. So I can't really do a whole lot of control with this analog sort of control. But the idea is, if I have a stick, it can, you know, I can I can roll around like that. Right. And I'll have a gyroscope uh, in this too, but mainly just to keep it from uh, jackrabbit starts and, and and you know and kind of have it sort of self-correct, you know, gracefully. And when the weight gets all the way to the end here, that's enough to roll the ball. Yeah, I mean, uh, I was playing with it yesterday. Here was the first time I actually had it like tearing across the carpet, you know. Mm -hmm. And it rolls pretty good on all surfaces. Um, I snapped this this motor yesterday though, and I don't know. I. There's a, there's a, yeah, this, no, yeah, this piece is all just locked up and ruined. Torque, I learned a lot about torque yesterday. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it, it tears pretty good. Um, it usually needs to go about this far, and then it kind of, you know, lurches forward. Right, You right. know, and it catches it and gets going. Are you finding, from an engineering standpoint, there are trade-offs in terms of how much control you have versus the speed, especially if you're talking about your limits yeah, here, well, are it's, the structure and the, the You're, the you're constantly the optimizing for your own abilities, for your own goals. You know, like, I, I'm not really good with uh, mechanical engineering. I'm a really good programmer, though. So, um, it, so, you know, when I'm looking at all the different options before me, and I'm like, well, I could do this crazy mechanical servo, mechanical gizmo, or I could just program the hell out of a gyroscope sensor, you know, mm -hmm. that, that's more approachable to me. And so if I'm going for speed, that's what drove me to do the two robots. 
and enter into it, there is a trade-off because you then you, you have a whole new set of challenges yeah and I can't go to a lot of builders with my challenges because they're unique to my goals you know what I mean and that's what I love I yeah. love that you know over a year and a half ago almost two years now when we first saw BB-8 mm -hmm. that everyone had in their idea in their head of how they could engineer right. a robot and yes now two years later there have been some some best case ones some that work really well yeah. for you it doesn't seem like you want to find something that works best for everyone you want to solve the solution for the idea that you have. Yeah, I mean, I, f I feel like, why, you know, I could just do what everybody else is doing, um, but th it's, not as ch it's not as fun. You know, I, I, and I, I'm not trying to, it's not a competition to me, it's just, uh, this is what I can bring to the table creatively. Like, of all the BB-8s, if you want one for an event that can, like, be, you know, sort of, you know, be super fast, you know, or, or, or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, uh, if, if there's ever, like, a race competition, that could be fun. But, like, that's just my personal spin on it. You know, it's art. It, it, it's like you're finding a way to be artistic within building something that looks the same as everybody else's. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so it's like I, I like I like finding ways to be creative in that in that sort of uh, in that parameter of like, okay, well we're all doing the same thing, but I'm gonna do it this way. And that feels like a convention like WonderCon or Comic Con when there is a BB-8 builders group club and booth. Uh, that you can compare BBAs and meet yeah, with the other it's, it's builders funny. and and show them your mechanisms. Yeah, it's, it, uh, this is my first convention since I was like 13. I don't really go to the conventions. I don't go to events. But uh, when it, when I heard it was a builders table, I was like, oh, that's cool. I get to geek out with other builders and see how they did it and and, and trade you know trade notes. I learned a lot from this guy Mike Senna. You know, he he lives you know uh, near me, and uh, he showed me a lot. He has get together at his house. I love that stuff. Uh, and then once I kind of build it, then I'm like, all right, on to the next thing. Like I don't. I, I do it for the, the journey, not the, the glory, you know. It's, it's, uh, I love geeking out with other builders and just learning and just challenging each other and, and, and all that, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Kevin, for sharing with us course, your BB-8 build project. Yeah, happy to, man. I'm big and fan of Tested. Thank yeah. you, thank you, and uh, thanks, and have a great WonderCon. Oh, cool. yeah, so yeah, nice you to too. Meet you. Yeah, great to meet you.